So here I'm going to demonstrate how the baking options work in uh, Ninja UV. Um, so once you open up the Ninja UV and you click on the bake tab, you'll see up here this is going to be the output directory. This is going to be the output name, so we'll call this box test. Um, you have options to open the texture ex or explore the texture. Um, these are some quick presets for the render size. Uh, for this demonstration, we'll just keep it at 512 so it'll be quicker to render. Um, this is the UV set name that will get rendered out. Um, you can bake AO, you can bake light maps, you can bake UVs, color, and a checker texture. You can also do a multi bake, which um, if you do whichever. Uh, bake options you have checked, it will combine it all into a PSD. So we will, I'll demonstrate the, the bake color. So you basically select the object. Um, I'll show you how this is set up. The UVs are set up. Um, it's just a quick auto mapping, um, but it has to be mapped from 0 to 1. Um, you can see that it has two different textures on it. Um, these are regular target textures, so you can use regular target files or you can use procedural 2D files or 2D uh, textures in Maya. Uh, this one has the, a cloth, cloth uh, texture and a fractal texture applied to it. These are both procedural. Um, so, just quickly, let's just select this object and hit Bake Color. And it's done baking, so you can go and hit Open Texture. And if you have target files associated with Photoshop, it will automatically open up in Photoshop. And you'll see that it's baked out the brick texture and the, the stone texture. Um, so let's try it on a, a procedural, my procedural materials. So just select the object, hit bake color, and then open texture. And there you have it. You have your two textures. Um, you can also hit explore, and you'll see that you have both of your targas in this directory. Um, so that's color. Let's you can also assign a new shader to it with the baked out texture. So you all you do is you just check it to assign new new shader and you hit bake color and you'll see that the resolution's low because we're just baking out a 512 by 512 texture on this object. So you can go into Hypershade, and we will graph this guy, and you'll see that it's baked out that text or created a shader with that texture node using the new uh, texture. Um, you can also bake out grids, which is nice if you want to check your UV resolution and uh, ratio. So we will just select the object, check uh, assign checker material to object, and hit bake checker texture. So now you have an object with a checker texture on it. You can open up that checker texture, and you'll see that it's a checker. Um, so let's duplicate this guy again. And let's do a multi bake. So let's bake out an AO, a color map, and a UV map. And we'll assign a PSD to the selected object too. So select the object and do a multi bake. And this will take a little bit longer since we're baking out AO. And we just wait until it's finished.
and there. Um, so you'll see right now that it has it's black because this is kind of a bug in Maya where if you create a PSD in, through my, Maya, it actually can't display it in Maya, which is kind of stupid. So what we do is we select that. We just open this texture again in Maya. And let's just collapse these. And you'll see that you have a PSD. You have all your layers. You can turn off all your layers. So here you have your UV. Um, and you can see your AO and everything. So all you have to do, we'll just turn the UVs back on, is go File, Save, and go into My again. Go back into the Hypershade and just double click that and it will refresh that material. And there's your PSD on that object. Um, that's about it. Um, you can edit your AO bake set, um, the occlusion fall off, um, this, the X and Y resolution will get overridden by these numbers. And you can also do edit light map bake sets too. Same thing. Um, and this will all work with procedural textures too.